So looking here at an anterior view of a head and neck model, uh, we can see, of course, the mandible here and then the hyoid bone inferior to that, which means uh, we can see the thyroid cartilage here and the thyrohyoid membrane. Then inferior to the larynx, we can see here the thyroid gland and then some C-shaped cartilages of the trachea there. And let's just zoom in a bit so we can see the stru some structures in the neck here a bit more clearly. Now here we can see if we turn the model just slightly to have a more lateral point of view, we have thyrohyoid muscle, omohyoid, sternohyoid, and then sternothyroid. So T-O-S-S -S or TOS as we move from lateral to medial. So they're very clear on this model. Just Lateral to them, we have the common carotid artery, and you can just see it splitting before they disappear into an external carotid artery and an internal carotid artery there. And then, of course, we have the large sternocleidomastoid here with part of the external jugular vein on its lateral surface. Oh, and look what we can see here. Down here, we have the inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle. So that's this one here omohyoid, travelling from the hyoid bone to the scapula. Uh, now we can also see on this model, here we have a part of the brachial plexus here. So that means we're looking here at the anterior scalene, the middle scalene and the posterior scalene. And you can see here too, we have a subclavian artery. So the plexus and the artery both in between anterior and middle scalenes but the vein, the subclavian vein, is anterior to the anterior scalene muscle. So we can see all those structures here. And we can even see, if we're careful, here's a, the first rib, here's the lateral border of the first rib. So we can even see a bit of the axillary vein and axillary artery. That's where the name is going to change from subclavian to axillary. So that's pretty cool as well. But what else is uh, great, oh actually while we're looking at those, on this model, we can turn it over. On this side, there's no sternocleidomastoid present, so that means we can see anterior scalene, middle scalene, posterior scalene much more clearly. There's much more of them to see on this side. And again, we can see the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery here emerging in between anterior and posterior scalenes. We can see the phrenic nerve running down the anterior face of the anterior scalene muscle as well. And here we can see the common carotid artery and we can see it splitting here into an external carotid artery and an internal carotid artery. So that's pretty cool. We can see quite a few structures there. But the fun doesn't end there because on this model, if we turn it up to look from an inferior point of view, here we can see the digastric muscle. Now this is the anterior belly. It's attaching into the uh, mandible here. And so here we can see digastric. Now the fibres are running anterior to posterior. Now it goes through a little sling that's attached to the side of the hyoid bone here and then here is the posterior belly. Now notice there are two muscles there. It's going to be the more inferior and posterior one of them. So that's the digastric there and there. Now the other one that's just next to it there, you can see it's quite slender up here and that's attaching to the styloid process. So that one there is the stylohyoid muscle. It's quite slender, just superior to <coughs> the digastric, the posterior belly of the digastric there. Now, deep to the anterior belly of the digastric, with fibres that are running medial to lateral, is the mylohyoid. So we can see it both sides of the digastric there. It's deep to it, but it's quite visible fibres running in the opposite direction. So mylohyoid there. Now then deep to the mylohyoid, which we can see on this side of the model, deep to the mylohyoid is the geniohyoid. And again, mandible to hyoid bone, fibres running anterior to posterior, similar to the digastric, but it's at a deeper level. So it's nice to be able to see all three of them here. So we've got mylohyoid, digastric, mylohyoid, geniohyoid there. Now also on this side of the model, I forgot to mention when we were looking at it before, uh, on this side of the model the omohyoid and thyrohyoid have been taken off here 
um, and what we've got, uh, sorry, and the sternohyoid, and what we've got here, I said thyrohyoid, didn't I? Sorry, mistake. This one is the thyrohyoid. So coming from the thyroid cartilage up to the hyoid bone, that one is the thyrohyoid. So this time we can see all of it, whereas on the other side, the omohyoid and the sternohyoid are kind of in the way a bit, and we can only see this much of it. So that's the entire thyrohyoid there. Sorry about that. 